Hi, I'm Laura Lawton with Lawton Printing Services. Welcome to Candidate Confidential. We're happy to have you join us. We're happy to join Spokane Talks Online for this important civic service. The Lawton team has been serving the Inland Northwest for over 77 years. What keeps us motivated is the continuous evolution of our company to better serve the clients we work with every day. We are also fortunate to have so many people willing to step up to serve our communities. Being a candidate and civil servant is too often a thankless job. I know you join me in thanking these forward-thinking individuals for their dedication to us all. With that, I thank you for taking the time to learn more about the people who want to lead our communities. Enjoy the debate and give Lawton a call for any of your marketing, printing, or mailing needs. Thank you. Hi, on behalf of Spokane Talks Online, welcome to Candidate Confidential. I'm Rich Cowan, and today I'm joined by two candidates for position four of Sp Spokane Valley City Council. We have Ben Wick and Ed Pace. And uh, we'll get right into these issues right after this break. Proposition two is not about politics. It's about protecting Spokane's economy. I'm opposed to Proposition 2. I'm opposed to Prop 2. I'm opposed to Proposition 2. Proposition 2 just doesn't make sense. I am opposing Proposition 2. I'm against Proposition 2. I'm opposed to Proposition 2. I'm opposed to Prop 2 because we have to protect Spokane's economy. Well, thank you. We're back. And uh, we're going to start right into the issues. We'll start with Ed Pace. And uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what's going on with the infrastructure and uh, the police and law enforcement. But let's start with law enforcement. Well, that's the appropriate place to start because okay. that is our city's number one priority. It always has been, always will be. It's uh, where the majority of our budget is spent for our contract police department. And, and what do you see as a candidate? Is there anything you propose uh, for your next yes. term? Yes, well, first of all, we just voted for um, a new five-year contract. It was unanimous. Um, we all spoke in, in, uh, in support of it. We think it's a good contract. Uh, the city manager recently uh, signed it, and so it's a done deal. Five-year contract. This is with Spokane County with uh, Sheriff's Spokane Office. Spokane County, so the mm -hmm. sheriff, we have the Spokane Valley Police Department, but it's it's uh, staffed and um, led by um, the Spokane County Sheriff's Department. Um, but moving forward, there's a couple of issues that are important that we need to work on. One is um, the concern of some residents about property crimes, and the other is the problem that all law enforcement agencies are having, and that is with recruiting and retaining police officers. So there's a couple things that a few of us on the council want to do to help with that. Um, and depending on what, what our police chief and city manager say that, you know, they think would be effective. But some of the ideas that we're putting forward are uh, taking some of our, our surplus that we normally, surplus funds that we normally invest in, in um, um, public works projects that benefit everybody, which the majority of it still will happen. Mm -hmm. These are, taking, would be capital improvements, yeah, things like yeah. that. And yeah, and the majority of surplus funds will mm -hmm. be used for that. But, okay. um, but taking some and funding as necessary a continuation of the countywide, or helping fund the countywide property crimes task force, which according to our police chief has been very effective. Um, number two, and this is something I've been talking about for almost the whole time I've been on the council um, and brought it up from the dice, made a few people mad, but um, I think we need to fix the compensation package for our officers so that um, they're paid equal to or greater than, and compensated, the overall compensation package, equal to or greater than City of Spokane police officers. So a more competitive situation right. for yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. um, that that causes problems. Of course, the union may not like it, so we need to, of course, work very closely with the union. We've got to work closely with the sheriff, uh, with our police chief, and with uh, um, you know county administration. But I really think we need to do that. Oh, okay. Um, 
Well, thank and, you. It, okay. Yeah. And, and Ben, uh, you heard a couple proposals that Ed had. What do you think? Yeah. So uh, similar to Ed, I, I think safety or public safety is a, a paramount duty of our city. And without it being a safe city, we don't really have anything else or nothing else really matters if we don't right. have a safe city. So I agree there. Um, some of the big projects in my mind, when I was on the city council before, we created a power shift, which is the idea of putting more officers on duty mm -hmm. when more calls come in. So just kind of taking a look at what times. Yeah. But we've never been able to staff that. So I think that needs to be a priority to get right. the power shift staffed and fully functioning. Um, that's one. Also kind of going around and meeting people during the campaign here and doing doorbelling, I noticed a lot of security cameras on doors and doorbell rings. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we need to work on property crimes. So that's definitely another one there. Um, we, we've always had a good standing contract with the sheriff's office and think that we need to continue doing that. Uh, we're actually a contract city mm -hmm. and that's a, a core belief that I think right. we need to continue as well is staying a contract city. Um, we did just pass the new five year extension of that some of the things I don't think we really needed in there, um, paying more. We, we had an opportunity when I was on the council to buy some cheaper cars. Yeah, they were a different color, but we saved a tremendous amount of money doing that. Um, one of the things that's in the new contract is standardizing car color, and so we wouldn't have had that same opportunity. So I think, well, it's good to have the contract. Some of the provisions in that contract need to be re-evaluated, re I think. I don't know that it was really necessary to do that. Ed, do you agree uh, with that? Ben makes yeah. a good point. I yeah. mean, I'm all about trying to save money. So he's he's right on there. Um, where the the reason we did that, and it, it really didn't make the contract over the top expensive. Um, the, the reason we did that, as well as some other things, was all about city identity. And we heard about city identity from a few sources. Um, one, when we were getting citizen input um, on the new comprehensive plan. We heard about that was one of their concerns, lack of city identity. Mm -hmm. um, and for those of us that uh, pushed the idea of uh, more identity in officers, and it's things like um, instead of having sheriff on the back of their uniform, it would say police, mm -hmm. uh, making sure they all wear the distinctive Spokane Valley police ba uh, patch mm -hmm. on their shoulder, and then of course the cars. Um, and those, the color of those cars has been there since um, the city was incorporated. That's not a new thing. Yep, Ben. Uh, we're just standardizing. What do you think of it? Yeah, I, I think we need some identity, but at the same time, I don't want to inflate cost. I mean, right. every, every $118,000 yeah. is another officer that we could have on the streets. And is so that what the cost per officer well, is? That's more fully than that. loaded. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, isn't that $150,000? So, okay, $118,000, yeah. no, you are right. You make a good there. point. Sure. That, and so if we're spending yeah. that versus yeah. colors or police on yeah. the back, we can have more officers on the street, I think it'd be better. And I would argue that we still need to spend to get officers on the street, but this isn't going to break the city or hamper our ability to do what's most important, which is crime, protecting citizens' rights. That's certainly more important than and car colors and stuff like that. But and I the, think it's important to do. And then on the other side of it, the, the wage increase. I think we need to definitely take a look at it or whatever has to happen yeah. for that. But at the same time, it's a contract. We don't tell our street sweepers what they have to pay their employees. We don't tell our garbage collectors what they have to pay their employees. So on some accounts, we need to make sure not to cross the line. We need to make sure to stay a contract city, and this is a contract, and we need to make sure that it stays that way. Absolutely, and that, that's why I said in the beginning we have to work carefully, closely with the union and, and uh, uh, county management and all that. And what I'm proposing is that we not tell um, the sheriff's department how much to pay their police, but that we create um, a city-funded bonus that we get they get on top of their um, compensation package. Ben, would you agree with that? I, I think it needs to stay at the contract with the sheriff. If the sheriff needs to do what he needs to do to provide us the service that we want. And so in our services, we want officers and we want to fund or, or staff the power shift and things of that nature. So, I mean, it kind of goes back to our service level. We want the service and mm -hmm. yeah. he needs to tell us what it's going to take to get there. We disagree a little there, but Okay. Um, that's all right. All right. Well, thank you for that. Let's move on to, to utilities and taxes. Okay. Good transition there. Uh, and I know there's a telephone tax there in the valley mm -hmm. and things like that, which is sort of dwindling because yes. it's on landlines. Yes. Um, uh, we'll start with you, uh, okay. Ed. 
let's talk about that a little bit. Where right. is revenue now, and what would you do with uh, with taxes? Okay, so I've got to talk about several different things. First of all, just by way of background, um, Fund 101 is for street maintenance, and that covers fixing potholes, cracks, signs, the usual routine maintenance kind of things. Uh, fund 311 is pavement preservation. And pavement preservation, I think, is what people think about mostly. Um, they experience repair mostly, but they think about if, if you know, they're getting their heads into this. Mm -hmm. uh, they think about um, pavement preservation, which we've heard uh, numbers over the years from four million a year to ten million a year. Um, so, this is not capital, but this is actually a, a, a yearly this, expense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and but some, some of it's capital. capital. Yeah, some of it's, yeah, okay. some of it's <clears throat> yeah, some of it's capital because um, um, just like if it's a huge rebuild of a street or something else that's right. going on sidewalks and stuff like that, that's capital. But but overall, it's pavement preservation. It's about going through a routine engineered okay. process and schedule of, um, of redoing streets right. so that as you're heading um, east on Sprague, once you cross Havana, the streets are awesome, just like they are now. Mm -hmm. And we want to keep it that way. So mm -hmm. um, what I've got in, in my mind, and um, I think you know, we'll hear some criticism from Ben, but um, we have, in fact, been paying attention to this. Um, but our, our staff is working on it now. There's nothing for the council to do other than keep up to date on what the staff's doing. So number one, um, our staff is working very closely with WashDOT to develop mm -hmm. um, or to evaluate how we are analyzing pavement quality and, and, um, um, and scheduling. So we'll come up with, we'll have a new process, okay. which I think will work better and be more accurate. Number two, we need to come up with an accurate cost model for doing that uh, pavement preservation. Mm -hmm. And then number three, we need to figure out how to pay for it. And I'm one of the ones that's committed to pay for it without raising taxes or creating new taxes. And there's enough funding there to do that? No, we're going to have to make some cuts. Um, some but cuts. we're okay. going to have to do it based on... Um, based on a new understanding that's actually believable of what the true cost is and what needs to be done. Um, that uh, you mentioned the telephone tax, the revenue's dwindling, you know, like yeah. about half now, I think, of what it was when they sure. started out. That goes to Fund 101, the street maintenance fund. So, you know, this part of this is dealing with that. Mm -hmm. The other part is, is funding the pavement You're preservation. Okay, good, Ben? So I agree. We need to we need to do more for our street fund. So every dollar we spend in maintenance or preservation, we can save up to eight dollars from having to rebuild right. the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it is very important to do. Yep. Um, one of the things when I was on the city council, we actually established a six percent general fund dedication on recurring expenses. So six yeah. percent of the annual expenses, we dedicate that to street preservation. Mm -hmm. And at the time, we had a projection of what the estimate would be. Right for maintenance and keeping up with the roads. Mm -hmm. And it was 16 million, something like that, a mm -hmm. year is what we would need. Uh -huh. So way more than what we were dedicating. 6% right. is about a little more than $2 million, just okay. so you know. Yeah. the budget, yeah. And so we're dedicating this $2 million. And then what we found was, it was very interesting, we went from a $16, $16 million a year estimate to an $11 million a year estimate mm -hmm. with only putting in $2 million. So there is a guesswork, and winters can do different things sure. depending on how the weather goes. Right. So I agree we need to take a stepped approach to it. But we were able to do that without raising taxes. My criticism or ideas of the city council right now is the last year that I was there on the city council in 2015, we just rolled over unspent revenues. So they rolled over about $3 million of unspent revenues from that year. They're already projecting $2.2 .2 million more revenue than expenses in 2018. Correct. So we have lots of revenue, but at the budget retreat, not one of our existing city council members brought up putting it or dedicating it to the road maintenance fund. Right. But that was that has and been so talked about, though. I'm just saying, at the budget retreat right. where we draft right. our budget, not one of them brought That's up putting correct. it towards street maintenance. That's correct. And, and, your, your, and your point is that if you put that money in the streets, yeah. you'd, you'd save this $8 yeah. down the road. Absolutely. Uh, right. Yeah. And so <clears> I'm <throat> firm with Ben that we've got to spend that dollar now 
We okay. have to do that. It's mandatory. To save the eight. Because yeah. our priority is public safety is number one, streets number two, other infrastructure, um, right. capital improvements number three, and so on. Uh -huh. So we have to spend that dollar now. It's just Ben and I disagree on, on whether or not we're actually doing anything and how to look at it. The problem with, and some council members did argue for taking that surplus, which comes mainly from sales taxes. We didn't mm -hmm. increase right. tax rates. Yeah. It's just that retail sales Which is have up been and so down good. all the time. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. And so, um, uh, well, it's actually been trending upward in the valley. It has. Yeah. It has. But still, now, but it could yeah. crash and burn. And you never know with so, you know, car true. sales, RVs, all that kind exactly. of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and so we've got to figure out how to do this without being slaves to um, right. uh, sales tax revenues going up and down. And even in a crash, we need to be able to still spend that one dollar sure. now. But it sounds like Ben's advocating spending it now to I mean to really to or, save that, or at least allocating it to that road. budget. He's so advocating with mm -hmm. the surplus that I mentioned yes, before, right? right? Yes. Like right now, we're sitting on three million, and you some don't of which your five million. You have three. Well, million. yeah, total. Three I meant, to 2. I meant yeah. three for the year. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and and as I said, I'm advocating for taking a little bit of that for law enforcement. And the okay. rest invest back in capital improvement, like bridging the valley, right? Um, which I assume Ben still feels strongly about. Yep. Um, and we've always mm. agreed on this. And when you say bridging the valley, you're talking about fixing bridge over the, like railroad that, you know, the railroad tracks at Barker, okay, gotcha. at yeah, the Barker Trent and is Barker, a big problem and right now. underpass Barker, yeah. at Pines. Okay. Anyway, mm. back to this. So, yeah. um, I, I, I don't think it it's a good idea to take that surplus and use it for pavement preservation, except an emergency. If if we're just flat out one year, we need to do that. I agree with that, but we need to figure out how to do that without using that surplus so that we, ag again, can use part of that surplus for law enforcement, which is number one priority, and then the rest of it for these capital projects, which you know are pretty reasonable. I don't think anybody argues right. with that. Well, ben, I'll give you the last word on that topic. Sure. So capital projects, we need to be going after our grants. Oh, I we, mean, back, we in, back in 2015, we had about a 70% grant matching for all of our capital projects. Now we're down into the 30s or about 40%, depending on how you look at the capital projects. Sure. So we need to really be going after the grants and be more strategic about that. You know, as a city, we actually don't no longer have a public works department. We've combined it and gotten rid of a number of employees there and lost a lot of knowledge base on our projects and things there. So we really need to take a look at and start making priorities in streets and a priority for our city. Okay. There's other, other issues there. Um, and, um, uh, you know, uh, Ben is right. We do need to aggressively pursue grants, and the, and the staff is. Um, that you agree with not, that? I think we can do more. I mean, the Regional Transportation Board, I know that you sit on that. Or, or we could improve our attendance there and, and do different participations at the state okay. level. And well, let's move on to uh, long-term capital investment mm -hmm. and just overall vision. Mm -hmm. And we'll start mm -hmm. with you, Ben. Where do you see the city in five years? In five years, I see us making a lot of strides. I think we've got a lot of things in the works right now. Um, we have a new city hall building being built. We've got some beautification projects that have been gone through, the Appaway Trail, Maribu Park area. And so I see us kind of uh, really flourishing. I think we're starting to get a lot more name recognition and identity going on in the valley. I hope that the chamber moves back into the, the Spokane yeah. Valley so we can have a strong business community there. But I, I think we need to make some more changes. I think right now we're not keeping up with our street maintenance and our roads are deteriorating. So we kind of have a crossroads there. Um, public safety needs some emphasis um, to get going there and to figure out our staffing level there. Um, so we have some big decisions ahead of us. But the other thing is, is we need to take a look at neighborhoods. Right now, I hear a lot and see a lot of apartments going in. And I don't know that we're really protecting some of our neighborhoods. Um, so we really need to take a look at preserving some different neighborhoods. Yes, we're not saying we can't do apartments, but maybe looking at preserving some of the identity that we have in the different neighborhoods and having some distinct or uniqueness. And when you say preserve in the neighborhoods, what does that really mean? Well, when we became a city, we wanted to control our own destiny. We okay. had a lot of farms. We had some horses. We had different animals and things. But with all the development now and in infill, it's kind of come in. It's pushing a lot of those farms and, and animal owners out. And so I think that we need to have different neighborhoods be able to, to have and maintain some of those larger lots. Um, so that way we have a little flexibility and different uniqueness throughout the city. 
Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so I agree with everything Ben just said. Hmm. It's just we have a different assessment of it um, and um, a different, I think, a little bit different um, approach to it. So right now, um, the city's in a great financial position. Our bond rating has increased twice over the past two years. Our, our um, general fund and other fund reserves are greater than 5%, which is a goal set by the original city council. Um, we're, we're still a contract city. We're aggressively pursuing grants. Um, the, the city is looking good. Um, the street problem will be solved before it gets to the point where we're, we were too late on spending that dollar to save $8 later. That's going to happen. Um, one, one thing uh, Ben and I have always agreed on is investing, if we have any extra funds in um, a big chunk of property that would be good park land comes up, we both advocate have advocated in the past, I don't know where you're at now, but we've both advocated in the past investing in, in Parkland because um, that's going to go away and if well, we don't, a, if we don't jump at it on sometimes. it. And, and um, uh, just a comment on what Ben said about hearing about concern over apartments. Every time a developer builds an apartment, um, there's an outcry from the surrounding neighborhood that, oh my God, crime's gonna go up. And realistically it is, because the more dense population is, the more crime, disease, everything else that we don't like is gonna happen. Um, and so it, it's, it's a definite problem. Um, it, I it, think it, though that our, our Regional Transportation Council or board actually brought up that we're having a disproportionate amount of hotel, or not hotels, apartments, apartments yeah. uh, being yeah. built in the valley compared to the rest of the right. region. And so hmm. I think we need to be paying attention to that. Okay, bit. so um, I'll, I'll give a qualitative uh, example now. Uh, you know, we're both out talking to people. We always do. We always have sure. as city councilmen. And um, uh, it almost broke my heart the other day. Uh, I was doorbelling and... Um, there was this property that, I mean, it looked like a little farm. It was, it was uh, uh, an acre or two, I think it must have been two, but they had a couple of cows with cowbells and a whole bunch of chickens and, and all that, and they were right next to an apartment complex, and uh, the property owner was telling me about, you know, how she's probably going to sell and move because mm -hmm. it's just not yeah. working with, with all the apartments around, and that just broke my heart, you know. Yeah. I, um, we do have a commitment to preserving neighborhoods. Um, one of the one of the goals in the comprehensive plan, which you know we both voted on, um, is is that we preserve and protect the character of our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So, in this comprehensive um, plan process, we went through re revisiting zoning for the whole city, and so the apartment complexes are in places that are zoned for them, which, you know, public input and everything um, right. showed that those were the best places. Sure. Ben? Well, we did a, a lot in that comprehensive plan change this last year, right. um, including collapsing some of the zones to making the higher density with low density. So, That's true. I mean, That's true. you opened up a lot of areas yeah. when we did that. That's true. But so. this was, you know, this is all being driven by market forces. Sure. So, you know, SRTC doesn't get to tell us how many apartments we can have. That's a SRTC regional. is the Regional Transportation Council. Oh, Spokane okay. Regional yeah, Transportation okay. Council, which yeah. <clears throat> we, we both actually serve on him as a citizen representative, me as a city That's council representative. And Ben used to be, uh, when he was on council, the chair of it, and mm -hmm. he was Great. the council representative. But, um, so they, but they don't get to tell us, you know, how many buildings we should have. The market does. We set, we set zoning boundaries. Um, but, you know, whatever gets built in there, according, as long as it follows the code and the usage matrix for mm -hmm. that zone, that's nobody's business. Yeah, ben, do you know? I, I don't think it should be an anything goes kind of a thing. I think we need uh, to be... According to zoning and Well, I think we need to be particular um, and codes. careful about some of those things. And okay. so I would take a look at that again. Well, and, okay. And there's the, other, the, other, the other one that I think was a, a big loss for the city and almost my biggest regret from when I was on there was the Painted Hills area. 
when True. that when that 90 acres yeah. there's never going to be another 90 yeah. acres of side city limits right. that could yeah. have been acquired that should have been park. invested in as parkland but um i was that was just before i got on the council so i had nothing to do with that um okay. well I, I, we got to move on okay um let's uh we're going to move on to one minute closing statements okay and i believe ed you'll go first here all right so go for it well just by summary i'm ed pace uh Married 44 years, father of four, grandfather of six, Eagle Scout, Vietnam veteran, former Hewlett Packard production supervisor. I love serving on the city council. I have a passion for our city. And so I'm just asking for uh, one more four year term and that's it. Thank you. Great, and Ben. All right, um, Ben Wick, fourth generation in Spokane Valley resident. My great grandfather actually had a dairy farm where Sprague in the 90 is now. Um, raising our fifth, happily married to my wife Danica. We have uh, three young girls, uh, Sabriel, Hermione, and Kalina. Five, three, and one. Um, committed also to the city of Spokane Valley in the future. I mean, East Valley graduate, went on to Eastern Washington University, has a degree in computer science, a small business owner in the valley, and uh, an IT manager by trade um, for Spokane Industries in the industrial park. Again, it's a great place to live and looking forward to help making this a better place. Um, for more information, see my website, www.benwick or electbenwick.org. Or you can reach out via email, ben at electbenwick.org. Well, you. great. Well, thanks, both of you. Uh, we have Ben Wick and Ed Pace running for position number four on the Spokane Valley City Council. And thanks for joining, and uh, go out and vote. <laughs>